one of the most fundamental questions that we all need to ask is what is our why? And you discuss this in your chapter titled, Get Bothered, Wake Up to What You Want. And you start this chapter out by talking about James Ancrum, who you covered in the book and the fact that he was adrift. And it made me go back to some of the people you brought up earlier that we recognize now as superstars. And it made me think of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who in his early stages of life was extremely adrift until he found his why. And this whole chapter made me think of the work that uh, Dr. Benjamin Hardy and Dr. Hal Hirschfeld do on future self. And it made me think of the concept of life crafting. I was interviewing Jim McKelvey, who founded Square, and I was asking him, what is the most important thing that a person needs to do in life? And he said, it really comes down to your why. It's finding a problem that's worth solving for humanity that you have the unique capabilities to solve. Do you view this in that same type of lens? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think that I've just noticed also in my laboratory that when we really get in touch with the why, which I see is like the importance of what we're doing. So let's say there's a certain medical problem that we want to solve. We want to try to figure out a way to deliver drugs to the back of the eye to, to treat macular degeneration, for example, or we want to find a way to deliver medicine into joints to treat osteoarthritis and prevent the, the future degeneration, or we want to find a way to have a system where we deliver nanoparticles into the bloodstream and have them target the brain so that we can treat neurological disorders. When we're really connecting with the why and we understand the patient group that we're trying to treat, it's magnetic. It's, you know, everybody wants to be involved. Everybody wants to help out in some way. And so to me, when you get in touch with the why, it just, it's just an unlocking moment. I'll give an example from the book, which just comes to mind. Someone that I interviewed, Elder Dave Corchain, who actually I dedicated the book to, he passed away a few months after the interview, but he spoke about, so he's from an indigenous group in Canada, and he spoke about how when he was younger, he had all this anger for what had been done to his people and the assimilation and torture and all sorts of terrible things. And he went to the grandmothers for advice, what to do. And they said, you need to get in touch with the ceremonies. You need to attend the ceremonies and really get involved. And so he started going to the ceremonies with a new sense of observation and curiosity. And he talked about how he started to get in touch with the drums of his people and uh, as he went on, they advised him that he needed to go do a vision quest. And so he went and did this vision quest where he went into the forest for several days without food and water. And this vision came to him that he needed to construct this center for knowledge exchange called the Turtle Lodge in Manitoba, and almost like the middle of nowhere, he needed to do it. And he came out of that vision quest with no money, no resources whatsoever. He just started talking about it and how that was his purpose. And the next thing he knew, people started showing up with materials, lumber and nails, and people from all over just started appearing, people donating money. And the next thing, he was able to build this massive turtle lodge structure, which is a become like this key center for sharing indigenous wisdom. And so it's, it's that type of thing. When we get in touch with our why, it just, there's nothing more powerful to create momentum and to bring people together and to solve problems. 